In the name of the one, holy, risen Christ. Amen. Amen. The green of Jesus is breaking the ground. And the sweet smell of delicious Jesus is opening the house. And the dance of Jesus' music has hold of the air. And the world is turning in the body of Jesus. And the future is possible. Lucille Clifton's buoyant poem, Spring Song, is the perfect way to welcome all of you to Easter. We at St. David's have been waiting for this moment, for the pop, beauty, and bird song of this day, a day that is all about heart, about us, and about a renewed hopefulness for a future that is possible because Jesus rose from the dead and saved us all. We have been waiting for you to gather and breathe life into today's celebration. Welcome to this holy place on this holy day. There are three things I want to offer about Easter, about the gift of resurrection, and I hope you will listen, because there's going to be a little quiz at the end of the sermon. So here are your cliff notes. Resurrection is about heart. Resurrection is about us. Resurrection is about invitation. Like Clifton's poem, Easter is all heart. A pulsating feeling of openness, joy, and fluidity. A kind of no-holds-barred, the world is my oyster kind of vibe. And that's Easter, all heart. If you read the gospel accounts, every single response to the empty tomb is an emotional response. The women, upon discovering that Jesus is no longer there at, the fir at first, are afraid, and then they're amazed, and then they're joyful. They tell the disciples, who respond with feelings of doubt, and then shock, and then jubilation, and then uncertainty again, and then back to joy. In, God, in John's gospel, uh, the account is even more emotive. Mary's grief and confusion, finding Jesus' body gone, then recognition of Jesus, who at first she thinks is the gardener, then relief and then clinging with a little dash of desperation. The disciples hiding in the upper room are frightened, and then they're amazed, and then at Jesus' appearance, tentative, and then they settle in to a deep and abiding peacefulness. And have you ever noticed, maybe in particular in John's Gospel, that everyone seems to be running? Mary runs to tell Simon Peter and the other disciple. The, uh, the two disciples run to the tomb, and the Gospeler is quick to tell us that the other disciple outruns Peter. After seeing the risen Christ, Mary runs to tell the others. I don't know about you, but I tend to run like that when the reptilian survival part of my brain takes over and I'm running for my life, like one time from a diamondback snake in northern Michigan and another time at Victoria Falls in South Africa when I ran for my life from a vervet monkey. <laughs> That's running away. It's an emotional, sympathetic, nervous system response. Running toward is also a fe feeling motivated, inspired by the deepest kind of love, like running toward a loved one in the airport after a long separation. You just can't wait to get to them, and walking just won't do. You run before you even know that you're doing it. Running in these instances reflects immediate, urgent emotion, and there's a lot of running in the Easter stories. It's important to note that there is nothing in the resurrection stories about the ego, the head, the logic, or the intellect, and believe me, I looked. Not one person in any story stops the action and wonders how these occurrences will piece together in a tidy, systematic theology. 
Not one person wonders how the crumpled clothes on the tomb floor or the reappearance of Jesus in dazzling white squares with the Hebrew scriptures or fulfills the teachings of the prophets or how the scribes or the Pharisees might interpret the resurrection in their temple sermons. Not one person stops to think about the ramifications of the bread and wine as symbols or transubstantiation or liturgical theology or what to include in a creed. Not one person stops to think. All they can do in the face of the fierce and beautiful truth that Jesus is alive again is to emote. Because remember, they loved Jesus. They had given up everything for Jesus. Jesus was family, their closest loved one, the center of their hearts, the reason for living. God raised Jesus from the dead, there to touch and see, not suffering on a cross, but shining and vibrant and whole. And the only possible, the only sensible response is pure, unfiltered emotion. Alleluia. Thank God. Love wins. Let's run. We do well, I believe, when presenting ourselves for Easter worship to take our cue from those who were there. We do well to resist the urge to overcomplicate, overintellectualize, overthink. And we're so very good at that. There isn't much room for overanalyzing in the face of resurrection, and maybe doing so is even an avoidance of allowing ourselves to feel the full impact of what God has done for us in raising Jesus. And even more than that, the whole spiritual process, the deepening of our Christian faith and practice over our lifetime, is all about slowly moving our orientation from our heads to our hearts in all that we do and say. The gift of resurrection is the central idea of the Christian faith. Everything hinges on it. And in the end, it is all and completely about heart. Secondly, Easter and resurrection is about us. To quote our favorite theologian, Richard Rohr, the message of Easter is not primarily a message about Jesus' body, although we've been trained to limit it to this one-time miracle. We've been educated to expect a lone, risen Jesus saying, I rose from the dead. Look at me. But let me share what I think the real message of our faith is. Every message about Jesus is a message about all of us. Sadly, the Western church that most of us were raised in emphasizes the individual resurrection of Jesus. It was a miracle, it's a miracle that we can neither prove nor experience, but are asked to boldly believe. But there's a great secret, at least for us Western Christians, hidden in the other half of Christianity, in the Eastern Orthodox Church, that portrays the resurrected Jesus not by himself, but surrounded by crowds of people. Yesterday, several of us gathered here at St. David's to think about the gift and meaning of Holy Saturday. That day, Jesus, as the tradition tells us, descended to Hades to free the dead and raise them with him. Hades is not the same as hell, although over time we've been melded those two words together to mean the same thing, but they are not. Hades, at least in our Christian tradition, is simply the place of the dead where it is believed the soul went after death with no punishment or judgment involved, but just went after death to wait for God. Yesterday, we looked at paintings and images from as far back as the year 400 of Jesus after his death descending down to claim every last person who had preceded him in death and to raise him, them up with him. The message? In resurrection, Jesus comes for us to bring us at the last to God. We are all saved, not just Jesus. 
Jesus' resurrection is a promise for all of us and for everyone who has gone before us. In raising Jesus, God promises that each of us will enjoy a similar joy, that all at our last we will be delivered into the waiting arms of God, surrounded by the fullness of love forever and then some. Easter is an announcement of a common hope. When we sing in the Easter hymn that Christ destroyed death, that means the death of all of us. It's not just about Jesus. It's to humanity that God promises life is not ended, merely changed. Resurrection is about us. Resurrection is for us. And finally, resurrection is an invitation. And by this I mean an invitation to a way of living our earthly lives. We are known to say that we as Christians are a resurrection people. By that, I think we mean that we strive to live our lives in the hope of resurrection, that we work hard to trust God's promises, that we believe that we are deeply loved by God and worthy that we know that God is more powerful than death, that God turns all of our crucifixions into resurrection, that in God, love triumphs over everything, that in the end, everything will be okay. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. The invitation of resurrection is to live our lives, our daily, quotidian, ordinary lives, as if we really and truly believe these things. But it is a choice, something if we want to live this way at which we work. We are not so at home with the resurrection, resurrected form of things despite a yearly springtime, healing in our bodies, the 10,000 forms of newness in every event and every life. The death side of things grabs our attention and fascinates us, as fear and negativity always do. We have to learn how to look for anything, everything infinite and positive or good, which for some reason is much more difficult. This past year, the Minnesota Institute of Art hosted an exhibition of paintings by Vincent van Gogh which he created during his one-year confinement in an asylum in St. Paul de Mossal after suffering his most serious psychological episode. The paintings were stunning. But the most compelling part of the exhibit was a small framed photo off to the side which portrayed the view from Van Gogh's cell through the bars out into the surrounding French countryside. Here he was, with the weight of misery, the deepest depression, the most miserable of circumstances, pressing down on him like a concrete slab. From that oppression of mental illness, Van Gogh had the wherewithal to gaze past those bars, past his own crucifixion, out into the beauty of the world. It's been said that we see what we look for. And in that deepest, darkest place, Van Gogh chose to see resurrection, or at least the hope of it. He didn't deny suffering or try to avoid it or refuse to attend to it. But somewhere inside of himself, in that place where only God resides, he learned to see the future that was possible, and from that place within himself created many of his most glorious works. What if, what if we accepted God's invitation and chose to live our lives this way? On this glorious day, in the stunningly beautiful church, we sing our hymns and pray our praise for the gift of resurrection. We do so because, here's your quiz, 
Resurrection is about Our. Resurrection is about Us. And resurrection is about May the risen Christ be with you this day and always. Christ is risen. Hallelujah.